Hi everyone. In this video, I will be discussing about graph traversals. Prior to this topic, you should be aware of graph terminologies and the graph representation. So if you have some doubts on those, please have a look at my other videos in graph playlist. Now let's jump into graph traversals. So the first question arises, what is meant by graph traversals? The technique that we used for visiting each vertex or node of the graph, that is known as graph traversal. So basically the methods that we use to visit every node of the graph, that is known as graph traversal. Now when you're studying a topic, we should be aware why are we studying it? What is the use of studying graph traversals? So one of the applications of graphs was garbage collection. So you know in Java or any other programming languages which do automatic garbage collection, then they need to find what are all the reachable nodes that were related to this node. For that, they use graph and to find all the reachable nodes, all the adjacent nodes, they use graph traversals algorithm. Second is, there are many games in which you can play against bot, single player games also or multiplayer games. So in that also there are some source and destination that you have to reach the destination in shortest amount of time. So the best reachable node you have to find. So in those cases also graph traversal algorithm comes in handy. And third is the navigation systems or the routing mechanisms. You are given a map of a city and you have to find the best possible route to reach a destination. So in those cases also you need to traverse through a lot of vertices and edges. Then you should know what is the best path that you can traverse to reach the destination. So like this there are various of applications where graph traversal or graph search is needed. So now we have established that we need to study graph search. Second question arises how are the different algorithms that we have for graph traversals how are they classified because basically you have to search every node of the graph so how there can be different mechanisms so different mechanisms that there are are depending on the order on which vertices are visited so there are basically two types of graph algorithm one is the bfs which is known as breadth first search and second is known as dfs which is depth first search so i have split this into two videos in the first video i will be discussing breadth first search what are the applications of it what is the algorithm and how we can implement it so these things will cover in this video and in the next video we'll discuss the dfs so now let's discuss what we meant by breadth-first search. So breadth-first search is like an army of soldiers which is spreading out to cover the area. What we mean by that is let's say we are in a battlefield and we come across a junction which has four directions and we want to explore all the four directions to as, so as to find the enemies. So what we do is we send some soldiers of the army in this direction, some in this direction, some in this and some in this. So we have spread out all the army to cover the entire area. So that is the basic essence that we do in breadth first search. One important term to note here is that we have to explore the graph layer wise. So now let's try to understand what we mean by layer wise. So we have this graph which has seven nodes and let's assume that we are starting from A. So basically we have to reach G, F, E, D, C, B from A. So one easy way to understand is let's assume that all the edges have weight one. And now let's try to find the distance of each of these nodes from the vertex or from the starting point A. So this edge weight is A, so this node is at distance 1. D is also at distance 1. C, you will either reach from B or from D, so its distance is 2. G distance is 3. E distance is 2. F is at 3. So these are the distances which are there from starting point A. We have started from here, we have to explore all the graph. So when we say layer wise this, so in each layer, we'll explore the nodes that are at e equal distance from the starting point. So B and D are at distance 1. So in the first layer, we'll discover these two nodes. After discovering these, so C and D are at a distance 2. This, this is the first layer and this is the second layer. And in the third layer, G and F, so they both are at the equal distance. This will be explored in third layer. So when we say layer wise, so that means we have to explore the graph depending on the equal distance from the starting point. Okay, now when we are implementing BFS, there are two important questions that we face. One is the which data structure should we use to implement BFS. So now as we see that the data structure that has to be used is FIFO data structure, which is a queue. But why FIFO? Let's rewind what is BFS. So in BFS, we pick a start node. So this is the start node and we explore in all the possible directions. And whichever node we discover first, we have to explore it. And important property of FIFO is first in first out. So this is in alignment with how we are going to implement BFS. Now people often confuse between BFS and DFS. So BFS uses Q and DFS uses stack. So when we're talking about breadth, we generally relate it with something that is horizontal. And when we're talking about depth, that is generally related with height. So breadth, which is more aligned with horizontal, so that is more related with Q. And depth, which is more related with 
stack because whenever we say stack we mean it like a stack of books or a pile of books so that is more in relation with height another funny way to remember is so just remember the word barbecue so how people relate is this so b is short form for bss and q means data structure q so for bfs you have to use q so this is also a funny way which people used to remember which data structure has to be used for bfs so now once we have this concept clear that q is to be used for bfs then the other important question arises that how are we going to avoid cycles so let's say in this one we are starting with a explore both these nodes b and d so now from b the adjacent node is c but for d we are just notice c so once you have this covered also there is a tendency to go back to b if you do this you will end up in a cycle so when you are doing graph traversal you have to avoid cycles so how we can do that is we need to keep track of the nodes that we have visited we can keep an array or a hash map that will keep track of which of the nodes you have visited so you do not end up in a loop so these are the two important things that we have to keep in mind when we are going to implement bfs so now let's discuss the algorithm that is used for bfs so we discussed that we need to have a data structure q and also we need to keep track of which of the nodes are visited so i'll keep a visited array so we have seven nodes here so i'll keep an array of seven nodes e f g so seven are the vertices so initially all of them are empty which means that none of them has been visited and let's say that a is the start node so from a we have to explore this entire graph so the first step is add start vertex to q so the start vertex is a so we'll add a to the q this is the first step second step is mark start as listed we mark them as listed so we did a check here so a is listed now then we have to check while q is not empty so q is not empty q has element a in it then we have to check what is the front of the q so front of the q is v so this is a currently so when we say front of the q this operation means that we have to dequeue the q also so we dequeue the q and let's keep track of the output so whenever we dequeue we'll add it to the output this is the output a then we check that for each adjacent vertex av of v so v was a the adjacent vertices for a are b and d so we have to run this for both of these elements b and d so if av is not listed add av to q so first time the adjacent vertex let's pick as b so b is not listed because there is no tick box here so add b to q and mark av is listed so then again we come to the next adjacent vertex of v which was a at next adjacent vertex was d we check if d is not listed d is not listed so we add d here and also we mark d as listed then again this loop is done we come again here while q is not empty so q is not empty because it has two elements b and d so we pick the front of the q so front of the q is b so output becomes ab for each adjacent vertex of b we have to run this loop so adjacent vertices of b are a and c so we check if av is not listed so first comes a but a is already listed because we have marked entry so we have to skip a so here we have avoided cycles because if we have again process a then we will always run in this loop but since we have marked entry of a is listed so we are skipping this loop so the next adjacent vertex of b is c so we add c to the q and we mark c as listed then we again come here q is not empty because it has two elements we pick the front of the q front of the q is d so we add it to the output and b is here d it is in what is of d r a c and e but a and c are already listed because we have marked their entries so we have to process e so we'll add e to the q and we'll mark it as a listed next we again come here while q is not empty so the first element of the front of the q is c so we'll add c to the output and we v becomes c it is in what is of c r b d and g but b and d are already listed so we add bend g to the q and we mark g as listed so all the adjacent nodes of c are processed then we again come here while q is not empty so q is not empty so front of q is e so we pick e here and mark e in the output so v is now e adjacent nodes of e are d and f but d is already processed because its entry is marked so we pick f and we append f to the q and it mark its entry as 1 then all the adjacent vertices are processed we come again here while q is not empty q is not empty we pick g check adjacent vertices of g adjacent vertices of g are c and f but c 
and f both are processed so we do not do anything here we come again here while q is not empty so q has element f now we the pop f and addition vertices we check addition vertices are e and g but e and g both are processed so we do not do anything and next time we come here the q is empty so we get this as output a b d c e g f so this is the bfs traversal of this graph so if we check also the distance theory that i have told earlier so both of these are in first layer then both of these are in second layer then these are in third layer first is the a then b d c e g f b d c e g f so this is how this traversal has been done so this is one of the traversal of this graph so if you see here when we started spreading out from a so we have picked b first so if we enter d in the queue first so because d and b both are equidistant so if we enter d in the queue first so we'll this order will be a little different so there can be multiple bfs traversals of the same graph so i have listed down some traversals so first one we traversed a b d c e f g f second one will be when d and b are interchanged because we can traverse any one of these so if we do that then we'll get this one now if we traverse d and b then also this c and d can be interchanged so we can get this graph also so there can be multiple variations of bfs traversal of the same graph but all the nodes that are equidistant from each other will be explored first than the nodes that are far away from them so that is the basic essence of bfs algorithm so one important thing to note here is that when you start traversal from a particular node you end up visiting all the nodes only if the graph is connected but if the graph is disconnected let's say you are given a graph like this this is the graph that you have and you start your traversal from node a so in this case you will only end up traversing nodes like this a b c d but e f will not be covered because there is no edge connecting them so in this case what you do is so you have this visited array so which have entry for all these nodes and a b c d will be marked after this iteration and e f is still left so what you do is whatever nodes are left after this queue is empty so you pick that node and you do a bfs traversal again from that so you will pick this e and this will be the new start vertex and you will do a bfs traversal from there so a b c d and e f so this is the complete traversal of the graph so you visit each node so this you have to take care if you are not sure whether the graph is connected or not then you do a bfs traversal for all individual components of the graph now once we have understood the concept behind bfs let's try to implement this i'll be using c++ and all the code that i'll be using will be available in my github repository link of that is in the description the example i'm using is the same one which you have discussed just that instead of alphabets i have numbered them from 0 to 6 so they are total 7 vertices let's now jump into the code so first i have created a graph representation form of adjacency list i have added all the edges that are shown in the diagram then i call this function bfs where i pass the graph and the starting vertex i am traversing from zero in this i have created a visited vector which is equal to the number of vertices of the graph and i initialized all of them in false i create a queue and i push the start vertex in the queue and i mark the start vertex as visited now i iterate until the queue is empty so I pop the first element from the queue and I print it. So this is where the BFS traversal is getting printed. Then I check what are the adjacent nodes of this vertex. And I check whether they have already been visited or not. If they are not visited, I push them in the queue and mark them as visited. So I keep doing that for all the adjacent nodes. And after this, I pop the next element from the queue and I do the same thing. I keep doing this until the queue is not empty. And at the end, you will see that all the nodes will be printed so this will print the bfs traversal if we check the output of this so the output is bfs traversal starting from node 0 is 0 1 3 2 4 6 5 so it is the same a b d c e g f now once you have understood how is bfs algorithm actually works next important thing comes is what are the applications that we have for bfs so one of the applications that we have is peer-to-peer -peer networks so when we say peer-to-peer -peer networks, we have MuTorrent, BitTorrent, other torrent clients and all those clients are there. So you will see in the status bar there, so it checks all the neighboring nodes. So the concept of neighboring that comes from BFS. So it checks what are the nodes that are adjacent to it. And it can also check that, let's say it want to see what are the nodes that are at third level or second level. So this concept comes from BFS traversal and all these softwares that are there for peer-to-peer -peer networks that rely on BFS traversals. Another application that we have is for social networking sites. So let's say we have FB, we have LinkedIn, 
so in linkedin you might have seen that some people is at a first level of hierarchy at some someone else is at second level of hierarchy so how this level of hierarchy is maintained in terms of graph so if you are friends with someone let's say you are at person a you are friends with b then b is connected with d so you are at second level so this level of information that is kept in graphs so that is used to display as the hierarchy information to you so so in social network websites all these use bfs traversals a lot to display this kind of information the next application that we have is in gps navigation system so in google map or google search if you have to find that what are the nearest coffee shops that you have let's say at a point where you are located from 1 km away those navigation systems can use bfs traversals to check if the neighboring nodes have any of these coffee shops at a particular distance so the distance can be the weight of the edge and then they can use this traverses to find in path finding like we have discussed in games and other software where we have to find the shortest distance to reach the destination but here we can also use dfs so both of these algorithms can be used then in broadcasting in network let's say you are in a peer to peer network or in a lan network and you want to broadcast a message to all of your centers so many networking protocols use this algorithm in garbage collection also so in many languages where you have to collect automatically the memory that is to be freed when the reference has been removed so all the related references are collected you garbage collection mechanism that relies on bfs algorithm and apart from that there are many numerous uses that you can find for bfs so in the next video we'll be discussing depth for search and we'll be do a comparison between bfs and dfs so if you have any feedback or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below do like share and subscribe to my channel and until next time this is sandeep thapar signing off